Hello, we're going to take a look at three different resistors for this video, and we're going to look at a graph of the relationship between potential difference and current. For our first resistor, we have what's called a fixed resistor, and we've looked at this in the last video. So this is a fixed resistor. It has a value that stays the same and does not change. So the resistance is constant as long as we have a constant temperature for this resistor. Now, Here's our potential difference being measured by a voltmeter and current being measured by an ammeter. If we were to put in some values for potential difference, so we've got a potential difference going from 0 to 8, and we would see the current change for those different potential differences. The graph, a sketch graph, would look something like this. So as we increase potential difference, we have an increase in current and it's a straight line. We describe this resistor as an ohmic conductor. In other words, it's got a fixed value at a constant temperature. Now we could reverse the connections on our cell, like so. So we could reverse the connection on our cell or our power pack, and what would happen is that would give us negative values for potential difference and for current. So if we were to take some more readings, they might look a little like this. Whereas before we had 8 volts gave us 0 0.8 amps, now we can see that minus 8 volts will give us minus 0 0.8 amps. Okay, now the reason for that is, as we've said, we've reversed the connections on our cell or power pack. That means we also have the current going in the opposite direction. And that is shown on the ammeter. The actual ammeter will give a reading and it will show a minus value. Okay, so you might have seen that if you've done it in class. But if we look at the graph, it looks like this. So we've got the positive region on the side, on the right-hand side, and the negative region on the left. Okay, so this is what a graph looks like when we have a fixed resistor or an ohmic conductor. We have a straight line and the relationship is proportional. So the bigger the potential difference, the larger the current and the relationship is a straight line relationship. Okay, now this doesn't always happen because often we have resistors that change in value depending on the circumstances in the circuit. So resistance does not always remain the same for a component. And we're going to look at two more components now. The next one we're going to look at is what's called a filament lamp. So here is our circuit set up in a very similar way to before, but instead of a fixed resistor, we have a filament lamp. And a filament lamp looks a little bit like this. So we can make that a bit bigger so you can see. The way it works is we put a current through it, the filament glows very, very hot, and therefore gives out light. Let's get rid of that, it's a bit messy. But that's how a filament lamp works. Now, because we're dealing with a change in temperature as well as, as well as a change in potential difference, we're gonna see a slightly different shaped curve. So we can measure potential difference and current as we did before. But if you look at the values, you can see that they might rise proportionally at first, but then they don't rise by the same amount as we increase the potential difference. So our graph would look a little bit like this. So as you can see, it rises possibly proportionally at the beginning, but as we increase potential difference, we have a higher current that causes the filament to be at a higher temperature, and that gives us an increased resistance at those higher temperatures. So the current does increase, but not by as much for when we have higher potential difference. Now we could continue this in the negative direction as well as we did before, and we would see that the results are pretty much the same only that we have negative numbers, as explained before. Our graph would look like this. It would be curved towards the ends, and in fact, we kind of get an, almost an S-shaped curve for our filament lamp, and that's because we have a change in resistance because of a change in temperature. The last component we're gonna look at is called a diode. We have come across this before, but here we have a circuit set up in the same way before, but we've replaced the lamp with a diode. A diode has a very large resistance in the reverse direction. So it does not allow it does not allow current to flow in the reverse direction. And that's because the resistance is very large in the reverse direction. So what would a table of results look for our diode here? So there's what it looks like, a larger magnification. But what would our table look like? Well, again, we've got positive and negative values. But as you can see, for all the negative values of potential difference, there is zero current flowing. So no current in the reverse direction. Our graph would look like this. So there's our positive region, there's our negative region. And as you can see, we have zero current for negative potential difference at approximately 
one volt, at approximately one volt for this table, we can see that the current will then start to rise and it rises in a proportional way. So the bigger the potential difference, the bigger the rising current. Okay, so that's what the graph looks like for our diode. So we can summarize the three that we've looked at now. So here's the three graphs for the three different components. Remember, our fixed resistor can also be described as an ohmic conductor, i.e. has a fixed value at a fixed temperature. But these are three graphs that you need to know and be able to recognize.